I'm often asked what it would take to change my mind. What evidence could the theist present that would make me believe in God? And I usually say, you know, well, any at all would be a nice start. But if pressed, I have to admit that I don't know exactly what that evidence would look like. You know, I can give it vague characteristics like repeatable and verifiable, but I can't point you to the holy grail of theistic evidence. Of course, the religious folks love to pretend that that's a fatal problem for us, right? As though the fact that I can't even imagine what the evidence for their position would look like is somehow a flaw in my argument. Look, I'm not the smartest person on the planet. Hell, I'm not even the smartest person on this podcast. So if before the evidence existed in its present state, you'd have asked me what it would have taken for me to accept the theory that all the matter in the universe was once squeezed into a single microscopic point, I'd have drawn a complete fucking blank. Right? I, I mean, I certainly wouldn't have said, well, I suppose if you could show that all the galaxies are moving away from each other at the rate uh, that increases with distance, and then, the, the, and then you discovered the microwave background radiation from the explosion that released all that energy, that would do it. And it's not because that evidence isn't convincing to me. It's that I'm not smart enough to come up with it. But lucky for the Big Bang, it wasn't relying on me to prove it. People who were way smarter than me spent decades gathering data and testing hypotheses, and in the end, they came up with a cogent argument that convinced the field, and by extension, me. And it's not like there aren't any smart people working from the theistic end of the God argument, right? Hell, in the West, they had a monopoly on the smart people for centuries and centuries, and still they have nothing. Hell, fuck all the smart theologists. They've got an all-knowing deity on their side, right? Plus the several thousand-year head start. And not only have they failed to make their case, but they failed to even define what making their case would look like. But for the sake of argument here, let's say that we did know what the evidence would look like, and then let's say we found it. Right? We, we all wake up tomorrow, and for the first time in its 3,000-year existence, theology makes a discovery, and it's an irrefutable one. And we all watch over the next few weeks while all the philosophers form a consensus, and the scientists in whatever field was relevant to the discovery vet and verify the findings, and the theists provide such a convincing case that atheism is no longer even logically justifiable. Now again, I can't even imagine what that evidence would look like, especially since we're talking about something that would prove theism, right? Not deism. We're talking about a personal God. And what's more, we're going to make it the Christian God, or one of the many different concepts of the Christian God. So first imagine a world where all-knowing and all-powerful aren't logical contradictions, and then layer in the you know, sex-obsessed, judgmental prickishness that their God is so famous for, mix in a little redemption, salvation, mix in that wacky trinity concept, and somehow that's shown to be the most likely explanation for the world. Now what? I mean, sure, I would stop being an anti-theist, but I think I'd still be an anti-goddist. You know, would you start going to church? Would you start worshiping this God? Would you change your life and live by his commandments? Would you tithe to him? Would you pray to him? Or would you put your hands together, get down on your knees, and offer a prayer that sounded more like this? Hey, God, now that I know you're listening, fuck you. Seriously, what are the impeachment proceedings in heaven? How do we oust you and put somebody competent in charge? Because no offense, at least half the people in my billiards league could do a better job than you. What, cancer? Are you fucking kidding me? Just indiscriminate cancer for good people and bad people, young and old, believers and non-believers. Hey, you know, don't get me wrong. If you, if you had cancer in your back pocket, right, and you just doled it out once in a Hitler, I'd be okay with it. But you're giving that shit to three-year-olds, you demonic fuck. And speaking of children, you think you could come up with an angel manufacturing method that doesn't require so many starving infants? And sure, I guess this is minor compared to the starving kids with cancer, but testicles? Really? What the fuck were you huffing when you came up with that idea? And about this original sin thing that you're so... St- pissy about. Quit blaming us for your fuck-up. If I left my meds in the middle of the playroom, told my kids not to eat them, it's my fault if they overdose. And even if it wasn't, temporarily killing your own son seems like a shit solution. Seems to me an all-powerful being could have done a little better, or a lot better, or maybe couldn't possibly have come up with a stupider solution. I mean, who's holding your feet to the fire on the blood sacrifice thing anyway? Aren't you God? Also, while we're on the subject of you being an incompetent fuck-up, where the hell have you been the last 2,000 years while these warring factions were using your word to justify torturing and killing each other? None of the witches that were burned alive, none of those heretics that were disemboweled, none of those women that were stoned to death prayed sufficiently, none of them were worthy of your mercy, or was the us killing each other in increasingly macabre ways part of your psychotic plan all along? Oh, and the kid fucking? Don't even get me started on the kid fucking. Any human that did as shitty a job as you you at anything would get fired. At best, they'd get fired. If the fuck-up included accidentally killing 250 kids a day with cancer, I would think your pink slip would come in the form of a mob swarming into your office, covering you with tar, cutting off your dick, and setting you on fire. 
And even if you're too much of an asshole to step down, you could at least shit can that PR department of yours after the 900th child rape. Look, asshole, I'm not going to ask you to forgive me. I've got shit like you should have called mom more often and stole that Twix bar when I was 11 in my sins column. You've got all the disease. So get on your fucking knees for a change and beg humanity to forgive you. Oh, oh, and I'm still waiting on that pony I asked you for in 1982, asshole. Amen.